afternoon. Welcome. I'm Dr. Jill Brooks, Director of Education for First Healthcare Compliance. Here at First Healthcare Compliance, we're focused on helping healthcare providers and billing companies around the country save time and money while reducing compliance risks with our single source solution. Each month, we bring different experts in the field to discuss a variety of topics relative to healthcare businesses. I'd like to introduce you to our presenter today, Ben Moore, CEO of Telmedic. Ben has over 15 years of experience in telecommunications, engineering and critical messaging, and emergency communication systems with two registered patents. Telmedic was founded three years ago to modernize clinical communications for private practices and hospitals. To date, the company has transformed clinical communications for over 350 organizations and has helped them as well as helping them address HIPAA compliance issues. According to a recent study by the Ponemon Institute Breakdowns, or delays in communication cost both practices, hospitals, and other healthcare organizations across the U.S. approximately nearly $12 billion in lost efficiencies. More importantly, 80% of Sentinel events involving patient care in a healthcare setting can be traced back to communication errors. Today, Ben is going to discuss HIPAA compliance at a high level, how clinical teams can solve communications challenges, and also engage patients while remaining HIPAA compliant. Ben? Thank you very much, Jill, and thanks also to First Healthcare Compliance for inviting me to speak today. Thank you also for all of you who are attending the webinar to learn more about HIPAA compliance and mobile communications. For today's webinar, we're going to first give an overview of HIPAA. This is a very basic overview, and many attendees on the webinar may have a much more in-depth and working knowledge of applying HIPAA policy to their organization. However, for those of you that are new to HIPAA, you may find these concepts useful. We will then focus specifically on HIPAA as it applies to mobile communications and focus on how new technologies can allow your organization to securely connect all stakeholders within the healthcare continuum. We'll conclude the webinar with some basic recommendations for getting started with deploying HIPAA compliant mobile communication strategy. One of the primary goals of the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, otherwise known as HIPAA, is to protect the confidentiality and security of a patient's health care information. The law accomplished this through three core compliance areas, the Privacy Rule, the Security Rule, and the Breach Notification Rule. We're going to go through each of these three rules in a moment, but first we'll cover off some key definitions. Protected health information, referred to as PHI, is any information about a patient, such as their health status or records of having received or paid for healthcare services that can be uniquely linked to that patient. For example, a patient's paper or electronic records constitute PHI. A covered entity is any healthcare provider organization ranging from a single physician practice up to large healthcare system that conducts specific transactions that pertain and contain PHI. Virtually all medical organizations are considered as covered entities with respect to HIPAA. A business associate is any company, person, or organization that provides services or works in association with a covered entity and must handle or disclose PHI as part of the working relationship. Finally, and of specific importance in our session today is ePHI, which is protected health information in electronic format. With respect to communications, for example, this may consist of emails, text messages, and voicemails. ePHI goes far beyond the electronic health record, as we'll discuss later. Mobile technology adoption has increased the flow and risks associated with the communication of ePHI. The privacy rule governs the usage and disclosing of PHI for covered entities and business associates. The basic goal of the privacy rule is to limit use of PHI while still allowing for optimal care delivery. The privacy rule also defines a patient's rights over access and control to their own PHI. A healthcare organization must document and communicate to patients how they will use a patient's PHI using a document called a notice of privacy practice. The security rule, however, is the main focus of our webinar today and pertains specifically to electronic PHI. The security rule requires covered entities and their business associates to enforce three types of safeguards for PHI. Administrative safeguards include the creation and enforcement of policies and procedures. 
For example, a risk assessment and management policy must be created, maintained, and followed. Physical safeguards govern access to facilities and data centers that pr process or store the PHI. It's interesting that in today's world of smartphones and high-powered mobile computing, a tremendous amount of this ePHI can be stored and accessed outside of physical server rooms. Although this portability creates terrific opportunity for enhanced patient care and collaboration, it also introduces many areas of risk that we'll be discussing in a moment. Technical safeguards address specific technology requirements over how ePHI is transmitted and stored. Some examples of this include data encryption, the security of communication channels, and password complexity. The security rule mandates that healthcare organizations or covered entities must have legal contracts, often referred to as business associate agreements, with any business associates with which they work. Finally, the breach notification rule defines what must happen in the event of a data breach, an incident in which ePHI is exposed in an unsecure matter to otherwise, or otherwise accessed by unintended parties. Covered entities must notify patients if their PHI is breached, as well as the HHS, and in some cases, the media for incidents that involve more than 500 patients. In addition, business associates must notify their covered entities of breaches or potential breaches of ePHI within 60 days of occurrence. The penalties for non-compliance can be very large. As of December of last year, the Office of Civil Rights had received over 106,000 HIPAA complaints. In May of last year, the single largest settlement involving a data breach with two healthcare organizations resulted in a $4.8 million settlement. Even for smaller organizations, the risk can be very large and should not be taken lightly. Criminal penalties, which involve the deliberate misuse and distribution of PHI, can result to up to 10 years in prison. The risk of these costly penalties can be greatly reduced and almost eliminated by following several key steps for your organization. First of all, understanding the three rules is critical. Performing a risk assessment with mitigation plans and actions is also important. Documenting and ideally centralizing the collection of all required HIPAA documents and policies is very important. A covered entity should evaluate and in some cases audit your business associates. A very important step you need to take with all of your business associates is, is to obtain that signed BAA document. A staff training and communication program should also be put in place. The majority of all these functions can be facilitated by leveraging compliancy platforms such as the one offered by First Healthcare Compliance, the sponsor of this webinar. Finally, and very importantly, an organization should deploy the required safeguards defined by the security rule. When it comes to mobile communications, it can often be very challenging to do this properly, as we'll discuss in a few moments. Before we start discussing mobile communications, I want to point out some very useful resources for ensuring ongoing HIPAA compliance for your organization. The American Medical Association publishes a HIPAA toolkit document, which provides great structure and outlines the steps needed to become and remain HIPAA compliant. First Healthcare Compliance provides a platform that helps organizations achieve and maintain not only HIPAA compliance, but other specific compliancy objectives as well. Now we're going to discuss HIPAA specifically and the security rule and how it impacts mobile communications. Mobile technologies become very pervasive in healthcare. Over 80% of physicians today currently use smartphones and medical applications on those devices. The primary use of the mobile device has always been communications. Because many clinicians use their personal smartphone devices for work, their personal communications are often entangled with work communications on their personal phone. The rise of the smartphone has produced many opportunities for accelerated healthcare collaboration, but at the same time, it's introduced a large risk for breaches of ePHI if smartphone platforms are not properly managed. One of the most pervasive forms of communication on the mobile is email. With some work and expense, email access can be managed securely from mobile devices, but there are also many potential pitfalls with the use of email in healthcare delivery environments. Email apps and service providers such as Google, Apple, and Microsoft do not provide all the required controls for HIPAA, as we'll discuss later. 
They also do not provide assigned BAA to most healthcare organizations when their hosted services are used. Bringing email in-house for self-hosting is always an option, but even then, it's very difficult to limit or restrict the flow of email into and out of an organization. This can result in inadvertent breaches. Many organizations have standing policies such that PHI should not be transmitted over email. Others deploy secure email solutions. However, mixing clinical communications with business communications on a provider's personal device can introduce inefficiencies in clinical workflow and clutter for the end user. It's really difficult to prioritize email communications that are urgent in nature, and patient safety can often be compromised as a result. SMS or text messaging provides a much quicker and responsive form of communication than email and is more appropriate for patient care. However, transmitting PHI using standard text messaging will put healthcare organizations in violation of the HIPAA security rule. The information is not encrypted and there is no ability for the healthcare organization to centrally audit, control, or purge text messages. Texts are also stored on mobile carrier servers and there's no policy or regulation governing the retention of this data. Text messages can remain on a user's device indefinitely where they may be accessed by the wrong person. I can't tell you how many times I've given my own iPhone to my daughter when she wants to play a game or watch a video. Voicemail is often overlooked when considering HIPAA compliance, but it shouldn't be. Voicemail systems are not very secure. Last year, a large news agency was able to easily retrieve voicemail inboxes for many celebrities just by the default passwords that are often used in SAMPA mailbox, such as the last four digits of a user's phone number. Voicemail is used frequently in healthcare delivery scenarios as clinicians are often busy and can't be reached on the first attempt. When we look at email, texting and voicemail usage in healthcare delivery environment, we see not only a tremendous amount of compliance risk, but we see many broken workflows as well. We've been into many hospitals and practices where we see communication clutter, such as what we are illustrating here. Dr. Jane on the right is receiving text messages, phone calls, and voicemails from her answering service and other healthcare providers, and sometimes directly from patients. And this illustrates another key issue in healthcare communications. Point solutions like secure texting or email do not always address what we call the outside-in communication challenge. The technology platform you should ideally should use should ideally accommodate outside patients and providers connect with members within your practice or hospital in a secure HIPAA compliant manner. This is one of the key differentiators of our product at Telmedic over anything else on the market. We've designed a solution that fixes this outside in communication challenge. Another problem we see daily is when Dr. Jane wants to call back patient Doe. She doesn't want to use her personal phone at the risk of exposing her personal phone number. And you shouldn't want her to either, as there's no audit trail associated with that patient callback. We refer to this as the inside out communication problem, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. To summarize, the ideal communications approach should not only unify the disparate points of communication around email, texting, and voicemail, but it should also connect all stakeholders within healthcare not only the members of your organization. In addition, by unifying the communication channels to a single platform, Dr. Jane's day is dramatically simplified. This is a screenshot of the, of the physician experience when using our Telmedic platform. A patient calls into our automated answering service and the call is triage, a voicemail is collected. The voicemail is delivered in real time to Dr. Jane's device with an accompanying transcription. Dr. Dane can choose to call the patient back by pushing a callback button. The call is logged into our platform, and when a patient is called back, the caller ID displayed is not Dr. Jane's personal device, but rather the main phone number for the practice. The same communication platform is able to handle voice notes between Dr. Jane and other providers, as well as high resolution images. If the Dr. Jane is too busy to deal with patient calls or messages from another healthcare provider, with one click, she can hand off the communication to someone else on the team. Some of the required safeguards to do all of this while still remaining HIPAA compliant are illustrated here. PHI must be safeguarded by a specific password or PIN entry. 
the healthcare organization must be able to define data retention policy so that messages do not remain on a provider's device indefinitely. Rather, they will self-destruct after the messages are no longer useful. And finally, the organization must be able to remotely lock and wipe the device if it's lost or stolen. We recommend that all healthcare organizations review their answering service. They should ensure that the answering service is provided a signed BAA and must also be able to produce mandated compliance documents on request. One key question is how the answering service is communicating with your providers. Are they using secure methods of communication? You may want to explore replacing your answering service with an automated solution like the Telmedic platform. Doing so will save time and money, but also streamline communication for your providers and reduce compliance risk. For example, we recently replaced the answering service used by a hospitalist group of 200 physicians serving eight hospitals with a fully automated turnkey solution. Inbound patient calls, for example, can be triaged and routed to the appropriate member of the care team based on the type of call. Providers can choose whether they want to take calls directly, forward them to other providers, or receive voice messages instead of calls. For after-hours communication, a platform that can adhere to a practice's call schedules is imperative. You want to make sure that the right message gets to the right provider at the right time to avoid frustrating your staff that are off call. A secure central location to log in and search, control, maintain, and audit the communications is also very essential. By adding structure and using templates and required fields for messages being sent serves two main purposes. First of all, only a minimal amount of PHI is collected based on the type of message and reason for the communication. This approach is mandated by HIPAA. Secondly, when a provider gets a message, it will be assured that no critical information needed to make the correct clinical decision is missing. To summarize our key recommendations regarding HIPAA compliance and mobile communication, it's important that platforms should support communication to and from all stakeholders, not just your internal practice members. An ideal platform should also cover all modes of communication such as texting and voice, not just email, and should also do so in a HIPAA compliant manner. You should audit your communication provider and answering service and ensure you have a signed BAA in place. Next week, we will be conducting a webinar showing how we brought HIPAA compliance and streamlined communication to CGH Medical Center in Sterling, Illinois for over 140 physicians and 1400 staff. After an extensive review of several communication systems, Telmedic was chosen as the only vendor that could fulfill all of their requirements. If you would like to be included in our next webinar, or if you would like to receive a free mobile communications audit or product demonstration, please feel to reach out and contact me directly. I can be reached at ben.moore at telmedic.com you can also call me on 1-888-364-9305, extension 700. I would like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to join me. I would also like to thank Jill and the team at First Healthcare Compliance for hosting this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ben. Uh, if you have any questions for Ben, please use his contact information on the screen. I think the information regarding automating the answering service was uh, was just really great. Um, our team at First Healthcare Compliance is available to you 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please call us if you have questions or would like to schedule a quick demo of our software. Thank you and have a great day.